now more than ever, we can and we must be doing precision medicine. Is it the right medicine for this patient at this right time? Is the therapeutic efficacy there and is it there much more or enough more than the side effect package? Hello there, my name is Michael Ackerman and I'm a genetic cardiologist here at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. Uh, I serve as director of Mayo Clinic's Winland Smith Rice Genetic Heart Rhythm Clinic and the Winland Smith Rice Sudden Death Genomics Laboratory. Our genetic heart rhythm clinic and our sudden death genomics laboratory is devoted to preventing sudden cardiac death from genetic heart rhythm diseases like long QT syndrome. Uh, we hope that this paper called Urgent Guidance for Navigating and Circumventing the QTC Prolonging and Torsodogenic Potential of Possible Pharmacotherapies for COVID-19 uh, is as helpful to you as it was helpful to our institution as we decided how we were going to deal with this issue here at Mayo Clinic. And it was an absolute pleasure to assemble this manuscript for all of us. And uh, I, I'm so grateful and appreciative to my former MD-PhD student and our current uh, trainee in cardiology, John G. DeSessi, who served as the first author and has worked tirelessly on this to put together what I will put forward is a most impressive special article. Uh, it also could not have been possible without the help from my colleagues in our Department of Cardiovascular Medicine, including Dr. Peter Noseworthy, who is one of our adult heart rhythm specialists and is the director of our ECG electrocardiogram laboratory, and our chair of the Department of Cardiovascular Medicine, Dr. Paul Friedman. The four of us are very thankful for the opportunity to have assembled this article. Uh, this article will appear online in Mayo Clinic Proceedings today, March 25, uh, and it will then soon appear in print in one of the upcoming editions of the print copy of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. The COVID-19 pandemic is, is upon us, and even now as I and with you, there are over 450,000 cases worldwide of COVID-19 and over 60,000 cases here in the United States. We are all doing what we can from physical distancing six feet away, washing our hands, uh, I'm doing that a lot, to taking our temperature. Mine was 97 degrees this morning. But we're searching quickly for treatments right now for the pandemic of COVID-19. And as we're hearing about the different possible pharmacotherapies for COVID-19, with using medications that have been around for a long, long time, namely the anti-malarial drugs of hydroxychloroquine with or without azithromycin and using other medications like some HIV antiviral agents, we have to be ready for the potential side effects of these medications. We are looking in hope that there is therapeutic benefit from these possible pharmacotherapies. But what we need to know for sure is that all of these considered medications that are not only being considered, but they are being used more and more every day, have a well-known and well-documented unwanted side effect of drug-induced QT prolongation that can lead to drug-induced dangerous arrhythmias that can lead to drug-induced sudden cardiac death. And as we've seen popping up all over the place in social media, there is fear and paranoia everywhere and it needs to be replaced with a sense of calm and power and understanding and a sound mind. And that's why we at Mayo Clinic put together this urgent guidance with respect to navigating and circumventing the QTC issue and the possibility of drug-induced dangerous arrhythmias, drug-induced sudden cardiac death from the use of these possible pharmacotherapies for COVID-19. It's wild west out there. If you go on social media, it's ranging from total ignorance about this side effect of these medications to total hysteria about 
this side effect from these medications. And we need to be reasonable and balanced and understanding of what exactly is the issue. How do we navigate it? How do we counter it? And how do we safely use these medications if indeed they work? I'm a genetic cardiologist. I'll leave it to the infectious disease specialist to tell us about therapeutic efficacy. Do they work to decrease the, the COVID-19 infection symptom severity, prevent the infection and so forth. I'll leave it to my colleagues in infectious disease and I'll wait and I eagerly await Dr. Fauci to tell us whether he's seen that the evidence is there to say that there is demonstrable uh, efficacy. But there's hope and there's encouragement about the signals so far. And with that, more and more patients are being treated with these medications like hydroxychloroquine. That's why we came forward and that's why we urgently put together this guidance so that we can help care teams all over the place and patients throughout the world understand are they at risk for this potential side effect or not. And we've put forward what we think at Mayo Clinic is a very reasonable, uh, sound and solid and safe approach. Our, uh, in this article that we, we talk about uh, the strategy. And the strategy starts with if these drugs are going to be used because there is perceived or proven therapeutic efficacy, what's my risk of the unwanted side effect? It's one thing if the unwanted side effect from a medication is a runny nose, diarrhea, headache, lightheadedness. It's another thing when that unwanted side effect from these powerful medications is drug-induced sudden cardiac death. So first, to prevent this, we need to understand the why. What is it that these drugs are doing? And we talk about in this article that besides their mechanism of action for which the hope is there for therapeutic efficacy, these medications have what is called an off-target. They block one of the critical potassium channels in the heart, in the heart muscle. This potassium channel is a critical controller of the electrical recharging system of those cardiac muscle cells. And when it is blocked and interfered with, the tendency is there for it to cause a reduction in the integrity of that recharging system. What some people call Dr. Roden, Dan Roden at Vanderbilt, reduced repolarization reserve. That sets up the potential and it's reflected by a long QT interval on a 12 lead electrocardiogram where it now sets up the potential that if the perfect storm descends, we can go from a stable rhythm, albeit with the abnormal QT signal, to a potentially life-threatening danger rhythm or worse, drug-induced sudden cardiac death. So we outline in this article First, know your QTC. What is my patient's QTC? What is that measurement of repolarization health of the heart muscle? It's easy to obtain, and there's even better ways to obtain it, whether it's by a 12-lead ECG. We talk how that has issues, doesn't it? That ECG machine with all the wires has to get into the patient's room with a technician exposure. That technician has to wear protective personal equipment and that technician will need to go in there before the drug is started, maybe a few hours after the first dose and two days and four days later, exposure. We could do it without the 12 lead ECG if they're hooked up to telemetry where we can see the heart rhythm and measure the QT interval and determine the QTC. And even as of Friday, we have yet another way. The FDA on Friday granted an emergency approval for one of the smartphone enabled mobile ECG devices, the CardioMobile 6L from the company AliveCore. We at Mayo Clinic have been partnering with that company long before COVID-19, since 2017, to come up with a QTC monitor solution. And the FDA has recognized that work and said it can be used for QTC monitoring for COVID-19 pharmacotherapies. So whichever way we choose to use, we need to know our patient's QTC. The good news, 90% of our patients will get the green light go, like the airport, cleared, you are clear. 
and that will be 90% of the patients will have a safe QTC value where there's plenty of margin for a QT drug reaction from drugs like hydroxychloroquine. We'll still check and we'll do our safety measures, but there should be a lot of confidence, very low risk. We outlined that there will be 5 to 9% of us that will be, get flagged with what we call the yellow light, caution. The QTC is a little edgy. It's greater than the 99th percentile for boys and girls or for men or for women. And as such, we should start doing our QTC countermeasures. Are there other QTC risk factors that can be corrected? Is my patient on other medications that have an unwanted QTC prolonging signal? There's over 100 FDA approved medications that have such a QT prolonging side effect signal. If they're on them, can we remove them? What's their electrolyte health? Is their potassium normal? Is their magnesium normal? If not, correct it. And then proceed with a lot of confidence that there's a lot of safety margin. And there will be 1% of our patients who will be flagged with the red light. Stop, wait, think, because their QTC is well beyond the normal range. It's at or above 500 milliseconds. That patient is on QTC edge. Doesn't guarantee that there will be the tragedy of drug-induced sudden cardiac death, but that is the at-risk individual. If the benefit outweighs the risk such that the team decides to treat anyway, all QTC countermeasures need to be implemented. The patient needs to be on telemetry, closely watched. Are they reacting even more such that we have to rethink? Some of us will decide that the risk benefit isn't worth it, that that flagged QTC individual is just too close to this unwanted side effect potential. And that's the whole purpose of this article, is to help the healthcare providers throughout the world get a handle on this unwanted side effect and how to navigate through, how to circumvent it, and how to safely and confidently use these medications if they in fact work. And that is the entire purpose because we were watching last week on social media and seeing total wild west out there ranging from complete ignorance that there's even this side effect by healthcare providers to a reaction among healthcare providers that there's no need to screen for the QTC, let's just treat anyway, and let's just accept the occasional drug-induced sudden cardiac death as friendly fire in this war against the coronavirus. That's unacceptable. We can do better than that. The guidelines that we provided, the guidance that we provided, show you exactly how we can do better than that. Identify those 90% of us where it is QT safe to receive these drugs. The 5 to 9% of us where we need to be in a caution, yellow light. The 1% of us that are going to get a red light label designation where proceed with great care, countermeasures in place. Think about it. How good is the benefit? What is the severity of my COVID-19? If I'm low risk, I'm young, I'm low risk, I have COVID-19 disease, but it's not declaring itself very severely, and I'm red light by my QTC alert, I might not even want to be take on that risk at all. On the other hand, if I am high risk, for COVID-19 disease. And I'm terrified about hydroxychloroquine because of sudden cardiac death, but my QTC is perfectly normal. I need to get that calibrated right to realize that this drug is incredibly safe in that particular setting for that particular host. I hope that we've achieved this objective of providing you this guidance so that we can navigate through and around this side effect issue for these drugs. I hope these drugs work, don't we all? If they don't work, they'll stop being used. If they do work, these medications that are currently off-label for COVID-19 but are being used will be used more and more. And if it's used, these medications more and more, this unwanted side effect of drug-induced sudden cardiac death will rear its head. 
We want to make sure we can save the lives of those with COVID-19. And we also at the same time want to make sure that our treatments do not cause an untimely drug-induced sudden cardiac death. I hope you find this article very helpful and I hope we can all uh, navigate through COVID-19 and come out on the other end of this pandemic much, much smarter and much better and much wiser than all of us were before this pandemic came upon us. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about Healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.